All right, so in this problem, I have 2 to the power of 22 minus 2 to the power of 21 is equal to 8 to the power of x. So I know at first glance, this problem looks pretty complicated. However, it's actually easier than you might think it is. So for this problem, I'm solving for the value of x. So for my solution, first start with 2 to the power of 22 minus 2 to the power of 21 is equal to 8 to the power of x. Now, it's 22 here. This is the same thing as 21 plus 1. So I'm going to rewrite this as 2 to the power of 21 plus 1 minus 2 to the power of 21 is equal to 8 to the power of x. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m plus n, this is equal to a to the power of m times a to the power of n. So 2 to the power of 21 plus 1, I can rewrite it as 2 to the power of 21 times 2 to the power of 1. And I still have minus 2 to the power of 21 is equal to 8 to the power of x. And now, from here, 8, that's the same thing as 2 to the power of 3. So now I have 2 to the power of 21 times 2 to the power of 1 minus 2 to the power of 21 is equal to 2 to the power of 3 to the power of x. Now, from, from my left-hand side, if I factor out 2 to the power of 21, I get 2 to the power of 21 times 2 to the power of 1 minus 1. This is still equal to 2 to the power of 3 to the power of x. Now, 2 to the power of 1, that's equal to 2. And 2 minus 1 is 1. So I'm left with 2 to the power of 21 times 1 is equal to 2 to the power of 3 to the power of x. Now, anything times 1, it's simply itself. So 2 to the power of 21 times 1 is simply 2 to the power of 21. So I have 2 to the power of 21 times 2, or is, sorry, is equal to 2 to the power of 3 to the power of x. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m times n. So 2 to the power of 3 to the power of x, that's going to equal 2 to the power of 3 times x. So I have 2 to the power of 21 is equal to 2 to the power of 3x. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m is equal to a to the power of n, this means that m is equal to n. So in this case, 21 is equal to 3x. So I have 21 is equal to 3x. All I have to do to solve this is simply divide both sides by 3. These two cancel out. And I'll be left with x is equal to 21 divided by 3, which is simply 7. So x equals 7 is my answer. All right, so in this problem, I have 4 to the power of x plus 4 to the power of x plus 4 to the power of x plus 4 to the power of x is equal to 1. So to solve this, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out 4 to the power of x from my left-hand side. So now I have 4 to the power of x times. Now 4 to the power of x divided by 4 to the power of x is 1. So I have 4 to the power of x times 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. And this is equal to 1. Now 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 is simply equal to 4. So now I have 4 to the power of x times 4 is equal to 1. Now, 4 here, that's the same thing as 4 to the power of 1. And if I have something in the form a to the power of m times a to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m plus n. So 4 to the power of x times 4 to the power of 1, that's going to equal 4 to the power of x plus 1. Simply just add these two exponents. And this is equal to 1. Now, anything to the power of 0 is simply equal to 1. So I can simply replace 1 here with 4 to the power of 0. And the reason I did that was to make these two bases the same. So now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m is equal to a to the power of n, this means that m is equal to n. So I simply just set the exponents equal to each other. So I have x plus 1 is equal to 0. And this is a simple equation. All I have to do is subtract 1 on both sides. These two cancel out. And I'll be left with x is equal to negative 1. Now, I actually have a second method of solving this problem. So 
So again, we first start with 4 to the power of x plus 4 to the power of x plus 4 to the power of x plus 4 to the power of x is equal to 1. Now again, I'm going to factor out 4 to the power of x. So I get 4 to the power of x times 1 plus, plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 is equal to 1. Now if I simplify it in parentheses, I get 4 to the power of x times 4 is equal to 1. Now this time, instead of multiplying these two, I'm simply, I'm simply going to divide both sides by 4. So then these two cancel out, and I'll be left with 4 to the power of x is equal to 1 over 4. Now, if I have something in the form 1 over a, this is the same thing as a to the power of negative 1. So 1 over 4, that's going to equal 4 to the power of negative 1. And now, since these two are equal to each other, the exponents are equal to each other as well. So I'm left with x is equal to negative 1 again. So that's two ways of solving this equation. All right, so in this problem, I have 2 to the power of 18 minus 16. So to solve this, I'm going to first rewrite this as, I'm going to first rewrite 2 to the power of 18 as 2 to the power of 9 times 2. So now I have 2 to the power of 9 times 2 minus 16, which I can rewrite as 4 to the power of 2. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m times n, this is equal to a to the power of m to the power of n. So 2 to the power of 9 times 2, I can rewrite as 2 to the power of 9 to the power of 2. Now I have this minus 4 to the power of 2. Now, if I have something in the form a squared minus b squared, this is equal to a plus b times a minus b. So in this case, I can think of a as 2 to the power of 9 and b as 4. So now I have 2 to the power of 9 plus 4 times 2 to the power of 9 minus 4. Now, if you guys already didn't know, 2 to the power of 9, that's equal to 512. So now I have 512 plus 4 times 512 minus 4. 512 plus 4, that's 516. 512 minus 4 is 508. So I have 516 times 508. Now from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite 516 as 500 plus 16. And I'm going to rewrite 508 as 500 plus 8. So the reason I did this was to make this problem easier to multiply because we're, we're trying not to use a calculator. And if we multiplied 516, with 508 on paper, that's going to take a while to solve. So now all I have to do is simply distribute 500 first. So I get 500 times 8 plus 500 squared. Now I'm going to distribute the 16. So I get 16 times 500 plus 16 times 8. Now let's go ahead and simplify this. 500 times 8, that's 4,000. 16 times 500 is 8,000. Now 500 squared, and that's going to be 50,000. And 16 times 8, that's simply equal to 128. So I have 4,000 plus 8,000 plus 50,000 plus 128. 4,000 plus 8,000 is 12,000. 12,000 plus 50,000 is 62,000. And 62,000 plus 128 is 62,128. So this is my answer. All right, so in this video, I'm going to solve the equation x to the power of x to the power of 8 is equal to 2. So I'm going to first start by taking the power of 8 on both sides. So I get x to the power of x to the power of 8 to the power of 8 is equal to 2 to the power of 8. And now I'm going to switch the places of these two. So I get x to the power of 8 to the power of x to the power of 8 is equal to 2 to the power of 8. Now I can rewrite 2 to the power of 8 as 2 to the power of 4 times 2. <clears throat> and if I have something in the form a to the power of m times n, this is equal to a to the power of m to the power of n. So this turns into x to the power of 8 to the power of x to the power of 8 is equal to 2 squared to the power of 4. 
meaning x to the power of 8 to the power of x to the power of 8 is equal to 4 to the power of 4. And because it's in the form a to the power of a is equal to b to the power of b, this means that a is equal to b. So x to the power of a is equal to 4. And if I take the eighth root on both sides, I get x is equal to the eighth root of 4.